Well, we're, we're here this afternoon to actually launch our local government manifesto and local government elections obviously fall on the same day as the Assembly and unfortunately they've been very, uh, very overshadowed in terms of uh, the Assembly election. And that's regrettable because there's an awful lot of important work carried out at local government level and we put a big important store on local government and in fact we have a very large uh, number of councillors, candidates running for local government. That being said, what we are pledging in our manifesto in local government is that we want to make sure the full implementation of the review of public administration as soon as possible within the next term of the Assembly. And that will do a number of things. First of all, it will reduce the size and the number of local councils from 26 to 11. It will actually allow us to transfer more function to local government, giving more power into the hands of locally elected uh, councillors. And will also, very importantly, make sure that local government will function on a much more fair base. So, in other words, we're putting equality at the heart of local government. So, we're going to put equality at the heart of local government, we're going to transfer more powers to local government, and we're going to reduce the size of it, make it much more effective and efficient, and more value for money for the ratepayers. Well, some of the additional powers that's been proposed to be transferred is planning, uh, very important for, for local government, uh, community planning too, where the first, for the first time, you have local communities, councils, community voluntary sector and the statutory agencies working together in partnership for local areas. And I think that will be the most significant part actually common to councils will be the community planning part. Because all too often we've seen a fragmentation uh, from communities that the, the statutory agencies specifically haven't really been uh, touching base with local communities and even the councils too. So this for the first time gives that power to local communities where all the statutory agencies sit around the table and make their areas better. Um, uh, there will also be local roads issues, uh, power of well-being too, uh, which is an additional power that uh, where there is gaps, where none of the statutory agencies or councils are actually performing tasks uh, at the moment, that uh, additional powers uh, can be uh, fulfilled, uh, namely the power of well-being for, for communities. So. You know, it's, it is exciting uh, if we are, get them all transferred and we would be confident that they will be transferred, but only, and I must stress this, only whenever the proper safeguards, checks and balances, ethical standards, uh, codes of conduct, etc. are implemented. In my experience now in, in Moy last year, it really made me realise the true potential that are, there is for the review of public administration and when we're in the bigger council um, cluster. In terms of even of tourism, we're all campaigning and promoting our own tourist industries and the likes of Moil has many jewels in its crown and it's important that we in the review of public administration are able to sell our entire cluster area as a tourism uh, destination as opposed to the fragmentation that is currently exists within 26 council areas. I also realise that within Moil we have the highest business rates throughout the north we're the smallest council trying to do all the statutory duties that every other council is expected to do. And it's important that with the review of public administration, local ratepayers will see a lot more benefits for the bigger rate base. There's a further point as well. I think it was important to add that obviously the executive has building the economy at the heart of the programme for government. There will be functions on building local economic initiatives transferred also to local councils. That means that local councils can work with local retailers, small businesses, to actually take a, a number of localised economic is, uh, initiatives which will help the local economies as well as working at the assembly and the regional level. And that's another very important function to be transferred to local government also. May 5th we'll see two elections in one day for the assembly and for local government and Sinn Féin obviously is also very acutely aware of the added importance of the 5th of May being the anniversary of the, the death and hunger strike of Bobby Sands. We all know what that means to our community. We all want to make sure that we honour and pay tribute to Bobby Sands. The best way we can do that is continue to build on the hopes and the positivity expressed by Bobby Sands by getting out the vote to build the Republican strength across this island. At the moment, we have came through an election in the 26 counties and with Sinn Féin uh, substantially increases vote. Uh, in the north we have an opportunity to continue to build that forward march towards uh, you know, building republicanism throughout the island of Ireland and that's a very important tribute to Bobby Sands and his other comrades who lost their lives on hunger strike as well. So we're all buoyed up in the memory of Bobby Sands, we're also very acutely aware of, of their responsibility on our shoulders to carry forward the ethos and the values and the political hopes of Bobby Sands and his comrades and we'll be working very hard to realise that on the 5th of May also.